Hello everyone. So again, uh, welcome back to the latest uh, lecture session. So in the last session, we have been discussing, I believe, the relevant aspects uh, or aspects relevant to uh, landfill and I think excavation and so on and so forth. But the context was that we moved on from looking at remediation of groundwater to remediation of contaminated soil and sediments, right? So at a minimum, we need to have some idea about the relevant aspects with respect to the leachate collection system, right? And uh, leak detection system and so on and so forth. So we looked at that briefly. So today we are going to look at a particular site uh, that we discussed briefly in the last session. I believe the one that we discussed was Moradabad, where we have a thriving uh, unorganized uh, uh, disorganized if I may uh, say so, uh, e-waste uh, dismantling uh, sector and also you know extraction of the relevant heavy metals from that particular uh, what do we say dismantled e-waste right and thus the relevant pollution and so on and so forth. So we are going to look at that particular site in some detail and then look at let us say is excavation a feasible option for that particular site right and then move on to what we say looking at what we say some of the more practical aspects with respect to landfill design and the relevant failures and so on right. So let us look at what I have here. So as you see here you know this particular picture let us say is you know from a particular uh, site visit that was mandated by the National Green Tribunal or NGT right that typically looks after uh, or deals with uh, what do we say uh, the relevant uh, aspects or legal aspects. Uh, let us say or disputes let us say relevant to environmental concerns and such and tries to improve the state of uh, what do we say uh, the environment if I may say so among other aspects right NGT. So uh, typically as part of NGT inspection teams let us say uh, people from IIT let us say are uh, requested to act as independent observers and so on and so forth. So this particular visit that I am uh, looking at is again as I mentioned. Uh, to Moradabad uh, e-waste uh, dismantling facility. So people from that locality or downstream of that particular locality let us say uh, you know filed I believe a particular case in uh, NGT and thus you know the relevant uh, push for let us say looking at uh, what is out there and uh, what are the remedial uh, measures and so on and so forth. So typically we see such facilities but keep in mind that we are talking about uh, what do you say stretch of almost 4 kilometer length and half a kilometer uh, width to 1 kilometer in some places right. So all in all this particular uh, what do we say uh, uh, this particular area anyway you know you have a thriving uh, uh, neighborhood typically uh, a slum though right uh, where they extract the relevant uh, what do we say uh, heavy metals let us say right. So one particular uh, unit on the banks you know this is what you see here. So this is the powdered uh, what do we say e-waste from which they are going to extract the uh, particular heavy metals right. So here we have one such unit uh, at least uh, the one along the uh, bank anyway right here you see the Ram Ganga this was during uh, I believe summer uh, right that is why you see little to no uh, flow out there but in the rainy season you are going to have considerable flow out here in this direction anyway right. So what do we have here as you can see you have uh, this particular unit that we are going to look at let us say and here they collect right collect the e-waste and then segregate it right and then uh, pulverize it or you know uh, you know put up in a furnace so that you know they form certain balls and such right and then pulverize it right and form the relevant powder that we were talking about uh, or looking at earlier let us say this fine powder let us say. And once they get that fine powder you know you see different stages of washing right they wash that particular powder right. So that you know during this washing let us say the relevant uh, heavy metals will be separated from uh, the other uh, uh, materials let us say right from this fine particular waste. So typically they looks like uh, at least the people there told me that uh, they go through around 3 levels of uh, such uh, washing before they get uh, they mention that they get around 90 percent recovery but I am not obviously sure of that. So let us just look at some of the uh, details here. So if not e-waste even other kinds of materials but I did not uh, I was not able to get a very good picture where they uh, looked at uh, or were segregating e-waste right uh, I obviously I was not allowed to obviously different types of scrap material. So the furnace uh, used if required let us say to uh, what we say melt the relevant stuff and then you form these relevant kinds of balls typically they are either from the furnaces right uh, slag and such or you know after melting it in the relevant furnace that we have looked at earlier right. So they get stuff from uh, furnaces industrial furnaces and such or also by uh, obviously uh, melting that in the 
melting that as in the segregated e waste in the relevant uh, furnace, right. So, then they form these particular kinds of uh, uh, solids, if I may say so, right. Again, these are from furnace, right, say, right, the, uh, from furnace, right. These are the kinds of uh, what do we say. Uh, uh, solids that they uh, end up uh, forming after uh, putting in the relevant furnace here. And then let us say they put it in uh, this kind of unit, right. And as you can see, you have a rotor here that lets this particular turn along this particular axis, right. And they have uh, metal balls in here, right. And then they pu put their so these chunks of solid as we uh, looked at earlier, right, the chunks of solid. Right, where are they? So, these solids they are placed in this particular uh, churner if I may say so and then they churn that until that fine powder uh, as we looked at in the earlier case right uh, you know that comes out let us say right. So, once that comes out what do they do? Again as you can see here this is the fine consistency of the powder here right. They have lots of bags of uh, you know thousands of bags of such uh, powder. So, one aspect is even during uh, segregation let us say right they are obviously burning this uh, e waste and then considerable levels of pollutants typically dioxins let us say are released and they are remarkably uh, toxic or uh, you know cause adverse uh, what do we say or uh, lead to adverse effects for uh, on human health let us say right. So, that is something that we uh, can even sense once we are in that uh, particular locality even let us say uh, half to a kilometer away let us say we can sense that you know. Uh, we can sense the air pollutants let us say right. Again uh, uh, there are also you ob yeah, during this time let us say I observed that many of the people working there had uh, not many at least a higher fraction than what you would expect typically let us say had deformities of some kind even the children or such. I am not sure if it is due to uh, them working in the close proximity of such uh, toxic or hazardous materials or if there are any other aspects, but that is something that I guess uh, we need to keep in mind though, right. Again this kind of a powder and then obviously you see uh, children well that is uh, what you would expect to, right. Uh, and they wash that particular uh, powder in this particular kinds of pits let us say different stages. So, the one that uh, washed material that comes out here as you can see, right. And here is where they are collecting the metals here in the pans let us say right segregating that here. So, as we can see here once they uh, what do we say clean the relevant uh, or try to uh, separate the relevant metals where does the where do the waste wind up as you can see all these heavy metal contaminated uh, waters let us say they obviously flow out here and then they leach into the relevant soil or on the banks of the river. And also all these mounds of material that separated from your or these particular heavy metals again you know this ends up contaminating, contaminating all these banks of the relevant river. So, you know the entire stretch of this particular river is uh, uh, remarkably contaminated with uh, high concentrations of the relevant uh, heavy metals now, right. So, now we are going to look at uh, one video. So, just a video where obviously they are uh, washing the relevant uh, particular uh, powder here, right. Typically lot of uh, child labor out there, but again that is uh, expected. And here you see the mounds of this particular separated material that is dumped out there. So, again different stages of cleaning out here, right. And then you can see uh, you know have a good view of the relevant uh, waste that are disposed let us say, right. So, as we can see here, right or at least as we saw you know Moradabad uh, uh, I guess there are other centers too, but Moradabad is one thriving center for such uh, what do we say. Uh, dismantling of e-waste and thus obviously you are going to have considerable levels of air pollution and this particular uh, soil pollution let us say right. So, let us say whenever uh, you have rainfall let us say or you know let us say the water in that particular area comes in contact with this uh, these heavy metals obviously you are going to have transport of these heavy metals downstream. And depending upon the levels of uh, concentrations to which the relevant populations are exposed let us say and the duration and frequency and so on and so forth obviously you are going to have relevant health issues right. So, in this context let us say let us see or let us try to look at let us say excavation and disposal in a landfill we are going to look at that case and see if that is economically feasible right. So, what are we looking at let us say excavating a stretch of 4 kilometers and maybe half a kilometer width let us say and then uh, taking that soil let us say maybe 2 feet uh, thick or 3 feet thick let us say uh, or deep pardon me and dumping that in a landfill right. So, let us look at that aspect please. So, let us look at this particular site and the relevant details. So, obviously, we are looking at Moradabad where is this uh, Ram Ganga and so on we looked at. 
But what are the typical contaminants that we were able to analyze and how did we analyze for these contaminants now? So we collected the relevant soil, right, and we conducted the TCLP test and what is this TCLP test now, right? Uh, it's a toxicity characteristic leaching procedure test to tell us, let's say, which will give us an idea about, let's say, the uh, hazardous nature of a uh, relevant sample, let's say, right? For example, in this particular case, the soil is contaminated, right? So how do I analyze for that for the different heavy metals and such? So I have the relevant acetic acid in contact with this particular uh, soil for relevant 24 hours, uh, you know, end over end mixing. So after that particular case, I extract that particular leaching uh, or leachate, let's say, right? So after 24 hours of, you know, this soil sample and the relevant acid at the relevant uh, proportions, let's say, what will happen? You will have, uh, what do we say, equilibrium between, uh, what do we say, soil and the acid with respect to the heavy metal, right? The heavy metal will now be in both soil and the acid and most of it would typically leach out into the relevant particular acid, let's say, right? Uh, and now what are we going to have or going to do? We are going to analyze that particular uh, leachate, let's say, right? So that will give us an idea about obviously the concentrations that we expect in this particular soil. So from what we have seen, we looked at chromium, cadmium, copper, lead, nickel, manganese and zinc, right? Typically what you would expect in different uh, what do we say, e-waste, uh, what do we say, uh, e-waste, uh, obviously there were some other rare earth metals which were relatively lower, but these were at relatively higher concentrations, right. Again, this is something that uh, we looked at and uh, one aspect that somebody proposed was, as I mentioned, excavation and transport to the uh, TSDF, treatment storage and disposal facility, right. And as we mentioned or I think we briefly discussed this, uh, we typically have at least in India one TSDF per state. And where is this located at? Kanpur, right? So let us go ahead and look at the cost estimation. So for excavation cost, let us say, right, first we need to excavate it, then transport it, and then pay the TSD of owner or operator for the, you know, dumping the relevant waste, right? So here let us say hydraulic excavator cost seems to be around 20 rupees per meter cube, right? And volume of contaminated soil based on the area of the site and uh, what do we say, uh, the length and the width and depth at a particular 2-3 feet, let us say, let us say, 2 feet I believe, we end up with this meter cube of soil and then at excavation cost at this particular rate as we see is, I believe 2 crore 43 lakh 84 thousand, just excavating the soil now, right. But obviously, you know, I am maybe uh, estimating the soil to be relatively higher, let us say, right, as in maybe not the entire. Uh, uh, 0.5 kilometer width or you know the entire 2 feet might be contaminated but that was a conservative estimate. But as you can see even if you decrease this particular uh, uh, what do we say cost by twice or you know thrice the uh, cost is still considerable right anyway that is one thing. And uh, distance between Kanpur and Moradabad from Google Earth let us say or Google Maps 436 kilometers and estimating that a particular uh, lorry or you know such uh, units let us say that transport soil will cost around. Uh, 25 rupees per kilometer, I end up with cost of 10,000 10, uh, rupees per trip. So, number of trips, right, and so on and so forth based on volume of this particular truck, I end up with these many number of trips and again, so thus the total transportation cost comes out to be 189 crore 84 lakh 68,571 rupees. Again, uh, maybe a slightly conservative estimate, but even if I take this to be uh, lower by let us say a factor of uh, 10 or even 100, you still see that the uh, costs are still in the uh, range of crores here, right. And then coming up to disposal cost, cost of disposal is typically 16 to 18 rupees per kg of the uh, contaminated waste to dispose in a landfill typically. And density we took it to be relatively higher, uh, this uh, actually out there on the soil, the one that I measured was lower. But to be on the conservative side, I took the density to be relatively higher. But if you want to, you can take the density of uh, what we say a relatively lower density. And then weight of soil, we calculated that. And obviously, the total cost for disposal now is, let us say this is 40 lakh. So, these many crores, 6,693 crore, 40 lakh and 80,000. And this is disposal cost for the landfill or for the T in the TSDF, how much I need to pay the TSDF guy. So, obviously adding the transportation costs, the excavation cost and the disposal costs, I end up with, you know, these many crores, right? Uh, crore is how many? Again, people can look at that, I guess, if you are looking at millions or billions, but these many crores of rupees now. So, even if 
uh, let us say you cut this down by a factor of uh, what do we say 1000 let us say assuming that maybe I took conservative values here and there even if I cut this down by a factor of 1000 I would still end up with something around 6 crores here right around 6 crores right even if I cut it down by a factor of 1000 let us say as you see you know the cost costs are considerable. And even then disposing it in the landfill as I mentioned there are some regulations as in with respect to the quantity not quantity the concentrations of heavy metals that can be present in the relevant uh, what do we say material when you dump it out there. There are some aspects that we need to look at typically solidification and stabilization might be required we will look at that later. Again the take home message here is excavation let us say is limited to let us say some particular uh, what do we say scenarios. Uh, when other uh, aspects maybe are not uh, feasible though. But as you can see here when we are talking about relatively larger quantities and such you know that is uh, probably not a, a very good way to go about it. At best you can take this particular soil to a particular nearby location and treat the soil there right rather than transporting it all the way to the TSDF and disposing it in the TSDF as we see or saw a major fraction of the costs are from disposal to the relevant TSDF right that is something that is obviously not uh, feasible right. So, uh, one aspect is that you can excavate the soil, uh, take it to maybe a few kilometers of uh, location X C2 and then try to see, treat the soil there by various means or you know uh, keep it segregated or such and so on and so forth. Right again uh, one aspect uh, that we looked at typically excavation cost, transportation and disposal costs are remarkably or you know considerable I guess right. So, with that I will end or you know we will move on to the relevant aspects with respect to uh, landfill. And with respect to landfill we did look at a few uh, pictures where we looked at one particular landfill and we had the infiltration galleries or the pipes pardon me not the galleries or the leachate collection system right. We looked at that as in we looked at pictures where we had let us say uh, the leachate collection system right. We had something like this and then a central collection pipe here and then this going to a particular sump this is obviously the top view. Right. We looked at some of these particular uh, pictures from an actual landfill right and now today we are going to analyze that in a bit more uh, greater detail right. Again what are the major aspects that we need to look at. So, we typically have a leachate collection system right. We have these particular pipes and this is the side view now side view right. So, we have these uh, leachate collection system here. So, typically some sand here at the bottom let us say and then gravel out here. So, a few centimeters 30 centimeters or so thick let us say a leachate collection system and typically you have a geotextile either over these pipes or typically you want them to be over your particular layer. What is the role of this geotextile now right if I do not have this geotextile what is going to happen is all the fine particles or the fine materials in the particular waste let us say they are going to be transported and now they are or they will end up blocking the relevant pores here right in this leachate collection system. If you do not have the geotextile layer above this leachate collection system you know the fines let us say will seep through let us say if I can say use that term and then what do we say clog your leachate collection system. So, what is going to happen the leachate is going, going to accumulate pardon me but is not going to be collected by your relevant uh, system here that is something that was observed in many uh, what do we say landfills where due to cost cutting measures let us say or the relevant operator trying to cut the cost you know uh, people observe that and that leads to considerable failure of the landfill obviously right. So, below that obviously you want to have the HDP uh, layer and as I mentioned I think we talked about it uh, in the previous session typically a few mm thick from what I looked at for a recent case it was around 1.5 mm thick the HDP membrane let us say. So, this will uh, you know uh, cut down uh, try to cut down all the uh, what do we say uh, permeation of leachate into the subsoil, but typically you are going to have punctures leaks and so on and so forth, so forth in this keep in mind we are talking about a 1.5 mm thick HDPE membrane right. So, you know you are going to have some uh, failures or so. So, beneath that you are going to have another semi impermeable layer typically a clay layer maybe bentonite clay and soil layer a few centimeters thick this will be typically a few centimeters thick and right and so this is my first what do we say uh, uh, hurdle to or this is the first hurdle that I am placing so that to the leachate so it does not reach the ground water. But assuming that you know uh, even this particular hurdle is not good enough I am again going to have a leak detection system 
a leak detection system or a secondary leachate collection system. Again, so whatever I have out here is going to be repeated out here. So, again the leachate collection system with gravel and so on and so forth, these are the pipes obviously and so a few centimeters thick leak detection system, right. So, any leachate that can let us say and here you have your waste obviously, right, your waste. So, the leachate that can bypass or you know not bypass let us say that you know gets through this particular system will have to be captured at this particular uh, leak detection system, right. So, that is something uh, that we need to keep in mind, right, because if this goes through, right, you are now going to have contamination of your particular groundwater or soil. So, believe that again you are going to have a HDPE membrane again typically 1.5 mm thick in this case depending upon the operator may be uh, slightly greater thickness and then again a uh, semi impermeable clay layer of a few centimeters thick right and then depending on uh, relevant operator or site conditions you can have another layer typically though this is mandated by law two uh, particular uh, layers now right. So, that is what we have here. So, again we are going to look at uh, you know uh, some practical aspects in greater detail right. So, let us uh, go ahead and look at that. So, uh, the data that I am going to present is from a particular open source uh, document that was prepared by the National Academies Press right and it was prepared by the committee to assess the performance of engineered barriers. These are obviously engineered barriers right, uh, right and what is the particular document titled? It is assessment of the performance of engineered waste contaminant barriers. Again as I am uh, repeating myself right. Uh, the relevant graphs or data that I am going to present in this particular session let us say is from this open source document an excellent source and again this data is not mine that is something obviously I need to make clear right now right. So, I would suggest that people look this up and you know uh, if people are interested in looking at the relevant cases for uh, assessing the engineered uh, waste containment barriers right. So, let us move on. So, typically let us say we are now looking at a municipal soil waste landfill right. So, what do we have here? Uh, let us look at the particular uh, what do we say uh, layers beneath the waste. So, obviously, here you have the solid waste. So, here as we mentioned you have the geo textile layer, geo textile layer right and then uh, geo or gravel with perforated pipes and what does that typically mean? Here you are going to have your leachate collection system right and again another geo textile protection here right geotextile protection layer beneath that because you do not want to puncture your HDPE membrane. So, first the geotextile layer and then the uh, gravel and the leachate collection system here right and then again a ge geotextile uh, what do we say protection layer and then the HDPE membrane and then the 1.5 mm thick HDPE membrane or you know here they have the geocentric clay liner, liner out here right different uh, what we say setups out here right and then obviously we have what do we have here uh, this is again a geocomposite or geonet drain let us say that is uh, at least in Indian context I have not seen a uh, lot of people uh, having that anyway and then obviously the compacted uh, clay liner I guess yes this is for municipal solid waste but typically in this uh, class we are talking about hazardous waste. So, in that context obviously we are going to have another particular layer out here and typically what do we have the geotextile filter and then the leachate collection system and then the HDPE membrane and the protection layers and then the compacted clay liner. So, as you can see these are the relevant aspects that we have now and one aspect as we discussed was if we do not have this geotextile filter out here right what is going to happen the fine particles in the waste are going to seep through and clog your particular primary uh, leachate collection system right and then you are going to obviously have issues with respect to the efficiency with which you remove your waste right and obviously let us say if I am done with uh, filling up my landfill I also need to have uh, what do we say a top cover let us say right what are some of the ways that we can have. So, again a geocentric erosion control system that is something that we have out here and then obviously the cover soil I think this is a better way to look at it. So, erosion control system right you do not want to have obviously a lot of erosion from uh, what do we say relevant runoff and such right and again a geotextile filter here you do not want to have the relevant fine particles going through and again a drain out here a drain and the geo membrane let us say and the geocentric clay liner, but obviously sometimes people you know just go with one of these two and obviously a gas vent, but again the role of gas vent let us say is important in municipal solid waste 
Uh, why is that? Because there you have organic, uh, typically higher, uh, what do we say, concentrations or amounts of organic matter. So this organic matter under anaerobic conditions, as in when we have no oxygen, let's say, can lead to degrade uh, and can lead to formation of relevant uh, gases. Typically, we, those which have a relatively high calorific value too. So typically, you need to have a gas vent or gas collection system and the relevant disposal of that gas. Otherwise, you will uh, have relevant issues. As in, I think a few years ago, uh, this case came up. As in, a slum came up over a particular municipal uh, solid waste dump. Right, a slum came up. And people were heard of cooking from, you know, uh, what do we say, cooking, you know, uh, their food, obviously, right, above particular locations, let's say, where, you know, gas was being emitted. And then I think there was an issue with respect to fire breaking out, and then people had to look at the relevant measures. So what's the cause of this uh, particular gas, let's say, or formation of this gas? It's that the, uh, you know, the organic waste in, in that dump was degrading, and then you are having these gases as byproducts, right? So that's something that uh, we are going to look at. But typically, though, in uh, landfill, let's say, or pardon me, hazardous waste landfill, we do not have uh, what do we say issues with uh, what do we say uh, the relevant formation of uh, these gases. One reason is because typically microbial activity is less, and also uh, your uh, concentrations of organic content are that high. But I'm presuming that it's one of the major reasons is that microbial activity doesn't or isn't great in this particular hazardous waste dump, right? So that's something that we have here. Again, you know, you can refer to these aspects obviously, right? And your textile filter and so on and so forth. Did we miss something? I think that's typically it. And as I mentioned, we will typically need to have a trench here, right? So these liners, as you can see, and all the materials are taken up. It's not just that the textile layer or the HDPE membrane that is taken up, you see that all these layers, let us say, uh, the semi impermeable layers and so on and such need to be taken up along this uh, slopes, let us say, right, uh, all along the perimeter. But typically, let us say, in Indian context, let us say, depending upon the operator again or the relevant uh, enforcement agency, the people have, in t have not taken up this particular impermeable layers, all the, all the other layers up the slope. They have only taken up this HTP membrane along the relevant uh, slope and you know anchored that. Obviously, as uh, uh, you know we discussed this in the last session briefly, you know then you are going to have maybe chances of greater chances of your waste directly obviously being in contact with your liner degrading the relevant liner or even puncturing the liner let us say, right. So your liner is at the sides as we looked at some of the pictures and you are going to keep dumping waste. So depending upon uh, you know how carefully the relevant operator is dumping the waste let us say, right, you are going to obviously have or typically I would expect that uh, you are going to have rupture of the relevant liner now, right. So that is something to keep in mind and also the liner is going to be exposed to the sunlight and that is going to degrade the quality and thus the life of the liner, right. So that these are aspects that we need to keep in mind. And I guess I am uh, running out of time. So in the next session we are going to continue this particular discussion with respect to some of the uh, general aspects uh, that we need to consider when we look at landfills. And then we are going to look at another aspect where we uh, try to look at uh, soils contaminated with uh, hazardous waste, as in we are going to look at containment. As in here, we are only trying to see to it that the waste does not transport over a uh, wider area. As in we are not trying to treat the waste, we are just going to try to uh, contain the waste wherever it is, right. So that is something we are going to look at in the next session once we are done with this particular aspects of the landfill. And that is it from me from today, uh, for today pardon me and thank you.